Hi guys, it seems everyone behind me here is waiting for the next update. So what's going on on the Reykjanes Peninsula? What is going on in Iceland? It seems it's rumbling there and it just doesn't stop. So what is going on? Will we see another eruption happening in Iceland very, very soon? And I'm not talking about the Sutnuka Crater series. I'm not talking about the one that still keeps going. No. There has been something else. So I'll go inside and then let's really, really talk about this, guys. So guys, I want to talk to you about an earthquake that has happened yesterday in Iceland. 3.5 magnitude at a caldera lake, Lake Askja. That's what the place is called. And uh, it is also called Oskjuvatn, but they call it Lake Askja because of its location in the Askja caldera. This is a vast crater lake in northern Iceland. So what is a caldera? Just so that we remember, the ones of you who have seen my videos about Italy, about the supervolcano Campi Flegri, that is a caldera. So a caldera is a large depression that is formed when a volcano erupts and then collapses. So during a volcanic eruption, magma that is present in a magma chamber underneath the surface is coming out. It empties, right? And... Uh, sometimes forcefully, very, very forcefully in an eruption. And when that magma chamber is empty, the support that the magma is providing in that chamber is not there anymore. So we have a hollow space underneath the surface. So as a result, the sides and the top of the volcano collapse inward. And that creates a caldera and a caldera can be very very large so they often range in sizes from up to one kilometer but also up to a hundred kilometers so that's about 0 0.62 miles up to 62 miles so sometimes they're so large that when you're on the ground and maybe you're walking through them you can't even see it and that's kind of the case um, near Naples in Italy with Campi Flegri, the super volcano that is rumbling as well if you're interested in that guys check out my playlist about the super volcano in Italy so in some calderas, they form a lake as this bowl-shaped area then fills with water. So that's the case here in Lake Askja in Iceland. Or let's, for example, you might know that Lake Crater Lake in Oregon. There's lots of volcanoes in, in the, uh, along the Pacific coast. So the Askja caldera. That Lake Askia is 217 meters or 712 feet deep and it's the second deepest lake in Iceland and uh, it's also one of Iceland's larger lakes in terms of like area the area that it's covering it's covering 11 square kilometers so that's about four square miles and they're saying that its formation, the formation of that lake is only temporary as the Askia caldera is one of the most active volcanic areas in Iceland. And it only came into being following an eruption in 1875 and it will very likely change dramatically again when the area erupts again. And the last major volcanic event that was nearby occurred in 1962. So this is a very remote location, but it can be visited in the summer if people have like a very good four-wheel drive um, or hiking tours into the northern highlands. So it is a natural attraction, but it also has a very sad story that comes with it and a little bit of a mystery. So in 1907, there were two scientists Walter von Knebel and Max Rudloff, and they were sailing across that lake when all of a sudden they vanished, they disappeared. All traces of them were lost. And we uh, hear Eddie growling at Rudy again because Rudy wants to jump up on this chair and Eddie won't let him. So we'll see what happens. 
The fiancé of Knebel, Ina von Grumkow, and a volcanologist, Hans Reck, they did conduct a search expedition and found absolutely nothing and even after many decades no signs of them or they bo their boat have ever been found. So that just on a side note and now let's hear what is going on in that area. The Icelandic Metrological Office has released new data today and to all of you who have doggies you told me that your doggies start jumping at the screen and start listening they're waking up and they're running because they hear eddie here so sorry for that i i already said it like eddie is starting a worldwide conversation and eddie your your bad mood is spread all over the place so better be quiet and guys since we're in the middle of the video could you do us a favor leave this video a like and if you're new here subscribe for more updates but don't forget the notification bell because otherwise you will not know back to the video guys okay the icelandic metrological office let's let's hear what they have to say so yesterday there was this earthquake in the northwestern part of askia it was followed by almost 30 earthquakes that were recorded in the same area in the morning from 8 in the morning until noon. And the largest earthquake, as I just said, measured 3.5 and it occurred at a depth of about 5 kilometers. Then there were also three more earthquakes that were of a higher magnitude. Um, they ranged from 2.0 to 2.5. Um, but then there were other smaller earthquakes as well. And uh, they're saying that the earthquake activity has changed little. And it has been fairly stable lately until yesterday. Because the last earthquakes that had magnitude 3 or higher were recorded in January 2022 and in October 21. So that's quite a while ago. And then you see a map here. So in the middle of the map, you see the lake. And then you see the locations of the earthquakes that have happened on March 25th. And then you can also... Please say hi. So a land rise, the same kind of land rise maybe that we're seeing underneath the Sorotsengi area where a magma chamber is filling up from a magma reservoir that's lying deeper down there. So they said that the deformation in Lake Askia has been going on continuously for about two years since the end of summer of 2021. And now he's falling asleep. So there was a continuous land rise so that land rise in Asia has been going on quite continuously for about two years since the end of summer 2021. But last fall, its speed slowed down significantly. Measurements since the end of last year, however, show that the speed of the deformation has then increased again, although it's a little lower than it was before the fall of 2023. So the measurements of the deformation that is happening right now that will take place in the coming days and weeks will definitely reveal whether the speed has increased again and whether the development will continue. And they will start to closely monitor that area because we know similarities, right? We know what is happening if land rises and then that magma chamber, at one point, it will reach the point of maximum elasticity and then it'll send the magma on its way to cause an intrusion or an eruption. We still have the eruption going at the Sutnuka crater series, the lava is still flowing, it's not, it's not dying down yet, it's still active. So if you look at these curves here, so that graph here shows the GPS measuring 
data from the station that's called Tana, and it's located on the northern edge of Askia. So if we're looking at the top graph, it shows the northward movement of the land rise. And the middle graph shows the eastward movement of the land rise. And the bottom graph shows the vertical movement. And also, they have a satellite image that's just brand new, basically, from March 19th. And it shows, of course, there's traditional winter conditions in the area and the lake is covered in ice. And outside, it's separated by two areas that are always not frozen. They're always open due to geothermal activity. Of course, we have a magma chamber underneath, right? So in February, about a year ago, um, the caldera became ice free, which was unusual so early in the year. So to, towards the end of last year, the Icelandic Metrological office has installed a webcam inside Askia that looks basically at the southern part of the caldera and every 10 minutes or so they're receiving pictures that show the conditions inside of that caldera and I show you a recent photo that was taken when the weather was nice so you can clearly see the environment and what's going on there um, so it's still white it's still covered with snow so why am I telling you all this what are the scientists saying a volcanologist that we are hearing very often regarding the current eruption and the the um, area around Grindavik and the Swartzenki power plant and the Blue Lagoon is Arman Höskoldson. He's a volcanologist and he says that the next volcanic eruption in the Askia caldera has been a long time coming and that there are clear signs that something is brewing there that will eventually lead to an eruption. So will we have another eruption? <laughs> simultaneously to the one that we're having right now, Arman says it will definitely end with an eruption. It will not end with something else. But he says, of course, we've been waiting for this eruption and it has been really like making us wait since 2012 because at that time it has all of a sudden melted the ice in the middle of the winter on top of that caldera. And, and that is normally not really possible unless you heat up the water in the lake, right? There have been British scientists in the area and they had an extremely dense and therefore accurate measuring network and they have pointed out for some time that there is magma in Askia or underneath Askia that is lighter than others. So if that magma starts to move, there will be an explosive eruption in the area and especially since the, there is a top of on that caldera lake and there's a lake right um so they're saying if something like this goes off of course there will be an explosive eruption but whether it will be small or large we don't know of course right this is hard to predict so there have been changes as we just talked about in the land rise at Askia, but um there are three measuring stations in that area and one of these stations shows no changes, which is giving the scientists a little bit of a headache, right? They're wondering, maybe is that faulty? Are the other ones faulty or, or is it, what is going on, right? So um, Arman says, on the other hand, that it is not, not necessarily unusual for the meters to show different results since Askia is a different volcano than all the others that they have been dealing with before. And he says, because you've got this big crack that forms this caldera, you can see different things depending on whether you're inside that caldera or outside that caldera. So, and he says, of course, it doesn't help that we have a whole lake inside the caldera, uh, caldera and that they have no measuring stations at the bottom of the lake. That lake is 217 meters or over 700 feet deep. So he says, we really don't know what happens at the bottom of Askia. So it is a mystery, but one thing seems to be for sure. The scientists agree there will be an eruption. Will that be now? 
We don't know, guys, but imagine we're dealing with the stuff that's going on on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And then in the northern part, there's more coming. So it's not really great. But yeah, Iceland is the land of fire and ice. That's what it is, right? So I guess the people who live there have to live with that. And the tourists that go there do. And some of them really go there because of that. Because right now, although there are so many warnings of toxic volcanic gases that are pouring into the Blue Lagoon area, into Grindavik, the tourists come flocking and they want to do these helicopter tours to the volcanic eruption site. The, the company that does them is fully booked. Um, of course, I assume that they're monitoring the air quality and uh, I don't know why they don't have like gas mask for everyone. Maybe they do. Um, if you've done a tour like this, let me know. Um, yeah, guys, that was my update about this. And I announced it in my other videos. I want to start answering some questions. So here comes the first one. And uh, yeah, let's just start. Okay, guys, and now let's get to a few questions. So good woman asked me, since when do you do this and why do you do this? So I don't know. I started YouTube about a year ago with a different channel. And yeah, I just wanted to try it out. I did a lot of shorts with the doggies and some travel videos and just stuff that I found interesting. And uh, yeah, then the Titan submersible accident happened and I thought, yeah, that's maybe not a match for the other channel. And uh, I started on the pulse with Silky and uh, I started reporting about the Titan submersible accident and I have a huge playlist about that, by the way. And uh, yeah, then uh, since I've always been interested in volcanic activity and earthquakes, I myself, I live in an area where where we're all waiting for the big one, the big earthquakes that will destroy the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's expected to be a nine or 10 magnitude earthquake. Uh, so I've been interested in that. So I started reporting about what's going on in Grindavik. And then uh, a lot of my viewers were heavily interested in that. So that's why I, and of course myself as well. So that's why I keep informing you guys about this. And why do I do this? Well, it's, it's hard to tell. I told you how I started out, but of course, um, it helps my farm. That's what I realized during the ride. Um, since I got monetized with this channel, it really, really helps the farm and the animals. So that's, that's something that comes with it, which I am very, very grateful for. And uh, I appreciate the support you're giving my channel and my business here, the animals uh, on YouTube and on my buymeacoffee.com site. So it's been an awesome ride so far. And it's because of you guys, because you're choosing to watch my channel and support my channel. And uh, thank you for that, guys. You know, and at the beginning of this channel and, and the other channel, it was hard to say the why. It's because I enjoyed it and I just wanted to see where it takes me. And not in a million years, I would have guessed that um, On the Pulse with Silky would reach over 30,000 subscribers. And uh, then, of course, this is amazing. And I love to engage with you. And uh, I love to read your comments. Also, if I'm sometimes late, I it's hard to answer all of them because it's become so many right now, but I'm reading them. And uh, I, I really in enjoy this. So it's, it's a process in the making. I don't think, um, or at least it was for me when I started YouTube that I had a plan in mind where that would lead me or why I was doing it. As I said, I, you know, shorts became more popular on YouTube. So I did a few shorts, funny stuff with the horses and funny stuff with the doggies and stuff like this. So yeah, here we are. <laughs> I guess that's where all this did did lead me and uh, I, I love it. I can just say um, I really, really, really love it. And uh, thanks to you, I, I can do this. And uh, I'll see you very soon with the next update. Bye-bye. <laughs>